are you and your group or the private sector uh, business owners going to push uh, members of Congress or the executive to come out with a law requiring mandatory vaccines? Because to, up to now, it's all been voluntary, but uh, apparently, even globally, uh, all over the world, there are many law, lawmakers and uh, leaders who are saying it has to be mandatory or we will never put an end to this problem. No, I agree with uh, mandating vaccines, but uh, Cito, the, the uh, IATF uh, uh, implementing rules on the uh, uh, requiring our employees to take the vaccine through these on-site uh, workers. Now, if they don't take the vaccine, then RT-PCR test is uh, going to cost them 70000 annually. So that alone is going to force many of the employees who don't want to take the vaccine to take the vaccine because the private sector we defer that we only we didn't want to do it in Christmas but now that Christmas is over mm -hmm. we will now implement this uh, uh, to those who are refusing until now to take the vaccine so that is one way of uh, uh, how the national government is pushing mandatory vaccines and I think the Metro Manila mayors and the rest of the LGUs will come to realize that uh, without uh, uh, strengthening the immunity of each one, either to vaccination or natural immunity, then this problem will continue to persist. No? And uh, it will, now you have Omicron, you'll have another one later on. So uh, I think this is not a matter of, well, you know, I mean, is it discriminatory? What, my, what are my rights? This is really protecting the entire Philippines, no? every citizen out there, and including the economy, which the government frankly speaking, cannot continue. Remember, they're the ones paying for all of these vaccines, and that's huge. And you can see the debt that is being incurred to fund all of these initiatives from vaccines to test kits. To, it's an enormous amount. And if the government will not, will not be able to generate tax revenues because businesses will uh, be closed or slower in it, its, it, its uh, performance because of uh, lockdowns, then uh, our entire country and, of course, the private sector will be challenged and we will not be able to sustain this war. So mandatory vaccines is something. But, of course, this is the political season. You know? I mean, it's not a popular thing to really uh, mandate because uh, those running for election will, will say that this should be done voluntarily. And I hope it could be done voluntarily. But we are at this point, at this point of... Uh, really uh, this uh, virus uh, never seems to be ending. No? And so we have to move towards turning this pandemic to an endemic. And that's our goal in the private sector. We called for a town hall meeting early before the end of the year. And we have one on Wednesday to call mm -hmm. on the private sector to accelerate immediately the booster shots. No? Mm -hmm. oh, you mentioned the word, the term pandemic to endemic. Uh, is there... Uh, do you have a concept of how to achieve this? Because uh, this has been uh, talked about. Even I think I first heard about it from the from the UK Health Minister, the Prime Minister of uh, the United Kingdom, and uh, it it started to pick up here in the Philippines. What is the concept of turning the pandemic into endemic? Well, as you mentioned earlier, DOH pointed the out that most of the hospitalizations are coming from the unvaccinated, about 85%. So the goal really is to vaccinate everyone, from the children, 5 to 11, 12 to 17, the adults uh, with vaccines. And now those vaccines will be termed as booster shots to be done every quarter, every, every, every four months. So maybe you will be taking the vaccine three times a year now instead mm -hmm. of just twice a year. No? So... Uh, this is what we have to do, strengthen the immunity, and uh, that this is the only way that we can move. And, as, okay, infection today is at 3,500. Assuming it goes to 6,000, uh, how many percent of those 6,000 are fully vaccinated and unvaccinated? Because the ones at risk are the unvaccinated. So if it is only if we are at 80 or 90 percent, then we should worry about the 10 to 20 percent unvaccinated who most probably will have a higher risk of entering these hospitals and getting severe infection. That is when we overwhelm the hospital capacity. And that's when lockdowns become more stringent. 
So that is what we're trying to do. Let's not look at the numbers and get frightened and panic if it goes up four, five, eight thousand. America still is, despite the hundreds of thousands of cases, everything still is open. So they learn to live with it, provided mm -hmm. that people are just getting well at home. No? What was the result of the opening of the economy, release, you know, uh, letting people out, it's uh, um, giving them more mobility. How did it affect business? Did it uh, achieve expected goals? Yes. So when we called it lockdown last year, early lockdown on August 8th uh, of 2021, uh, we the result was uh, a fantastic fourth quarter. The objective was met. No uh, cases went almost to zero in the fourth quarter, and that's what we wanted to see. And that's why the economy opened. And there was, that's why this, there was, of course, greater mobility. Everybody went out to shop, to spend, to uh, spend time with their families, uh, have Christmas celebrations. And maybe that is also greater mobility has a greater chance of higher level of infection. But you have to do that because we have to live our lives and we have to learn how to live with COVID. Of course, their sales of many of the entrepreneurs have gone up tremendously. Many have hit their pre-pandemic sales, I mean, uh, there are at least 80% of pre-pandemic sales. Many have even surpassed pandemic, uh, surpassed the previous uh, uh, normal sales they would have on fourth quarter. So things were very robust. Uh, all the restaurants and everybody did very well. And that, when I say, well, enough cash flow to pay the 13-month pay, to pay their obligations to suppliers and banks, mm -hmm. and that's what's needed. So... In fact, at, uh, sometime in December, we called for a town hall meeting because we want to sustain this momentum moving forward in 2022. So when we talk about lockdowns, the approach should still be granular, which is going to be done by the IATF, a granular approach on lockdowns, not massive lockdowns anymore. So that will help. Uh, the first quarter of this year, mobility will drop tremendously because everybody has spent their money for Christmas. So there'll be less eating out because everybody has already done that. So uh, that will help. No? Of course, the alert level shift to alert level three, uh, which is going to bring down capacity from 80% to 50% for those areas that are have a high vaccination rate. So uh, we hope it will improve. But ultimately, Sito, uh, mm. We have to ramp up vaccination uh, immediately. I mean, you will see Omicron maybe infecting more people. You can see it move very fast. What we've seen in America, it moves fast, but it is less severe. Many, my brother-in-law got it. He just uh, spent time at home and he got well. So many people will be able to just, it will be like the flu. No. Mm -hmm. So when you have the flu, uh, we don't lock down the Philippines. No, We just, people stay home. The only difference is that the unvaccinated will be the one that will be at the highest risk. And unless we vaccinate these people, they will overwhelm the hospitals and they could cause the, the worst of the lockdown. So that is what the Metro yeah. Manila mayors are trying to prevent.